All right, so Betaflight 3.2, I did a video a while back on dynamic filters and a lot's changed as far as how to set them up. Um, everything has been brought to the GUI now. So I'm making a short, quick update video. Um, I'm gonna try to keep it as informative as possible, um, but as short as possible. So uh, basically, uh, Betaflight has added a bunch of new features uh, directly into the GUI. So you do not need to go into CLI anymore to set up a lot of things. So like for instance, anti-gravity and dynamic filters, those are all been added to the other features menu under the configurations tab. So you don't need, there's no need to go into CLI to set that stuff up. You can turn it all on just like you can turn air mode on permanently through the other features tab. Um, some other things is they added the anti-gravity um, settings. Those are now under the PID tuning tab. Uh, so you can adjust those. You don't need to go into CLI to adjust that. Um, and they've added the D-term low pass filter into the uh, filter screen, uh, filters tab. So there's a lot of things they've added. Um, the other the nice thing they've added is the uh, in the receiver tab, you can now set your low mid, low, mid, and high settings for your radio. So if your radio is incapable of going to 1000 and 2000, uh, you can set the high and the low uh, right there in the, in the settings for that as well. So there's a lot of nice little features that they've added to 3.2. And uh, being that this is kind of an update to my dynamic filter video, I'm gonna go back through Betaflight using the new configurator and just show you guys how you can go ahead and set up uh, the dynamic filters without going into the um, CLI anymore. So, and another thing too is if you are one of the guys that like to run the reverse motor direction so that your uh, props go away from the camera instead of going into the camera, they've also added a, a way of reversing the uh, motor direction without going into CLI as well. So that's under the configuration tab as well. So I'll just quickly go over those things and then I'll go over how I set up dynamic filters uh, or the dynamic filter and then uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So like I said, I'm gonna try to keep this short and simple. Um, I'm not gonna go into all the theory on why dynamic filters work great. And if you want a little bit more info on just the dynamic filters, check out my old video um, where I talk about the dynamic filter a little bit more. In this video, I'm just gonna simply talk about how to set it up and all the new features in 3.2 that are in the GUI now. So we'll hop on over into Betaflight and go from there. All right, guys, so we are in Betaflight and you can see right here that it's configurator 3.2.1. This is currently the newest configurator right now. Um, you will need this configurator as well as the newest version of 3.2 um, in order for all of these features to work properly. Um, but the newest one is 3.2.1 as of today, which is August 23rd, 2017. I also wanted to show you guys real quick that make sure you do full chip erase, show unstable releases, and you can now update to the newest 3.2 RC3. Uh, right here in the GUI so it makes it a lot easier and you can start from scratch with the freshest 3.2 if you're on one of the older versions um, you will need the newer one in order to get all of these features to work properly so anyways that's that's all of that and we'll go ahead and hop on over into the actual configurator show you what's new and uh, show you how I set up the dynamic filters so first things first, you will see under configurator or configurations, you'll see motor direction is reversed. You can now enable or disable that. And anytime there's a little question mark, if you hover over it, it explains a little bit better of what it means. When you check that, you'll actually see the motor direction change right on here. Again, a lot of this stuff will not work unless you have the newest RC3. So make sure you're on RC3 if you're wanting to use any of these new features sometimes they'll they'll be there and you'll be on like an older version of 3.2 um, and you can enable it and save and it won't save it because it's not actually named the proper thing in CLI and most of this stuff well all this stuff technically um, connects to something in CLI so uh, anyways you'll notice that's there so that's how you can change your motor direction on the newest 3.2 right in the GUI 
So we'll go down to the other features tab and you'll see just like air mode, they've now added anti-gravity and dynamic filter right here in the features tab. So you do not need to go into CLI to enable these permanently anymore. You can enable them right here in the other features tab. Then in the PID tuning tab under PID settings, you'll see anti-gravity gain and anti-gravity threshold. Those are right here in the PID tuning tab. So you can turn those up and change them however you need uh, right here in the GUI. No need to go into CLI. And then under the filters tab, they've now added the D-term low pass filter right here in the GUI. Um, so you, again, you don't need to go into CLI. So now I'll go over how I set up a fresh quad from scratch uh, to run on the dynamic filters to get the most out of it. All right, so first things first, you're gonna wanna go and just enable the dynamic filter. After enabling the dynamic filter, you're gonna wanna go to the PID tuning tab, go to the filter settings, and you're gonna wanna turn off notch filter one and notch filter two. And you do that by just simply turning the frequency of them to zero. The reason you wanna turn off the notch filters is I have experienced issues where the, I don't know exactly what's behind the reasoning, but the dynamic filter will actually cause some kind of frequency, resonant frequency, or uh, basically an oscillation in the gyro loop. Um, I'm assuming it's trying to fight these gyro, uh, these notch filters. Um, but the whole point of the dynamic filter is to not need these notch filters at all anymore. Um, the whole point of the dynamic filter is to try to get rid of as many of these filters as you can because each filter takes up uh, time. It takes up, it has to run through this filter before it can go to the next one and the next one and the next one. And each one of these adds latency to your response time of your stick to the actual quad responding to that command. So you want to remove as many of these as you can get away with. As you can see on this build, I'm running zero for notch one and two, which turns them off. I am also turned off my D-term notch filter and I've bumped up my low pass filters as well. Um, the reason for doing this is the, the higher you can make these, the more responsive the quad will be and the least amount of filtering possible, the more, more responsible, more responsive your quad will be. So, and I also do uh, D-term low pass filter to PT1 to just get even more out of it. Um, again, the least amount of filtering you can get, the better for stick feel. Now, the way I would go about doing this is this is a perfectly tuned setup for my craft. These settings are not going to work for everybody. These settings won't even work for the exact same build. Um, everything exactly the same, you will not end up at exactly the same settings for a perfect ideal tune. If you want to get to these settings, I highly recommend black boxing and that's when you can get into bumping up your low pass filters. Um, but if you want to get a really good setup and get it tuned really well and you don't know how to black box, there's an easy way to get a much better setup than stock um, by just simply going through turning on the dynamic filters, turning off notch one and notch two, and going out and fly. You'll immediately notice that it flies, a, it, it will fly better by just doing that because you've essentially taken away one filter. Uh, yes, you've turned both of these off, but you've added the dynamic filter, so you still have one filter active after turning both of these off. Well, you have more than one, but you've essentially removed one whole filter. So. The next thing I would recommend is if your motors are coming back cool um, or less than 160 degrees, you can go ahead and turn off the D-term notch filter. If it's still coming back the same temp, um, you can go ahead and like if it's still cool, the same as it was before you turned this off, I would recommend turning on PT1. At that point, that's as much as you can really do without black box. If you want to slowly bump up the gyro low pass and the d-term low pass you can go up five to ten hertz at a time on both together um until you can either noticeably hear vibration or feel heat in your motors um and then i would normally back it down a couple hertz so like 10 hertz after you've noticed any kind of heat 
uh, or or any kind of noise, I would go back down in frequency about 10 hertz. So that's basically everything. There's there's you know a lot more to getting into heavy details about how to really really tune it. And like I said, you need black box for that. But I just wanted to quickly go over all these new features they've added directly in the GUI. So if you were scared to use any of these settings because you weren't familiar with CLI, you can now go through and do everything right through the GUI now with the new 3.2.1 configurator. So hopefully this helps you guys out. And if you guys like the video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe and uh, have fun flying.